Okay, so we've just arrived back from uh, from France. A very, very long flight. Oh, never again to San Francisco. Anyway, so one of the first things we obviously did was pick up the RV from Paul Everett, who had been uh, doing some warranty work. And we noticed that the Blue Ox tow frame was absolutely sea solid. We couldn't, we couldn't extend these at all. So with a lot of sort of, you know, pig ignorant force, I managed to, to get it hooked up, but uh, clearly it wasn't right. So this morning, if you uh, have a look here, I thought I'd take these, these uh, protectors off and see what's underneath. And sure enough, it's absolutely, well, it's not seized now, but it's very rusty. These really should be of a material that, uh, like stainless steel, that, uh, that don't go rusty. So, but I have, I've just repaired this one, serviced it. But the thing I think the problem is, these are completely hollow underneath. So any rain, of course, goes in there and this shaft starts to deteriorate. And if you leave it for a long period of time without using it, then obviously it's going to, um, the rust is going to build up. So I'm going to show you a very quick way of rectifying the problem. Get yourself some emery paper or some wet and dry. And literally rub this shaft down. You want to do this until you've got most of the rust off and it and the thing moves freely it's not a difficult job but it's not one that um, I knew you had to do I mean we had a blue ox tow frame before and we never did this so I don't know if they've um, changed the materials so as you can see it comes up comes up quite bright fairly quickly obviously it'd be easier if someone was holding that but Julia's holding the camera so I know she's talented but she's not that talented <laughs> So it doesn't take doesn't take long to do. All you do to expose this is you just cut away the cable tie on the end. There's one on each end. I'm finishing off with a little bit of um, what we call wet and dry. It's the um, it's the sanding paper that you can you can use wet, and that will really take off any residual. This end isn't quite so important because it doesn't actually slide in to the to the housing. So I'm just going to wash that off with. Well, I use deionized water because I've got the um, I've got a little container of it. But I shall let that dry, and then I'll coat that with grease and reseal reseal the grommets, and then it should slide as easy as that. So what I'm going to do now is just put a load of grease on the on the shaft. Now normally I would use some rubber gloves to do this but I've run out so unfortunately I've got to get myself covered in grease. So liberal amounts of, uh, of grease required. And then what we'll do is 
we'll seal one end and then we'll we'll fix one end and then we'll grease grease the other now to do this you're going to need two sizes of zip ties you need a a large one to do the the large end and a smaller one to do the smaller end so i would suggest that you grease up half of that shaft with a good a good uh, quality grease and then use these cable ties or zip ties and then you can carry on greasing this end this end isn't quite so crucial because it doesn't all go doesn't all go into here but I suppose if it's got grease on it it will stop it it will stop it rusting see look that it's beautiful now beautiful To get these as tight as possible so now beautiful so that's perfect so that's the way you service a blue ox toe frame so if you've got one and you've had it we've had that a year now uh, I, I think it will be a good a good thing to do rather than let the rust you know set in and then it seizes up so if you want a little job this sort of winter um, get yourself a couple of cable ties a little pot of grease and uh, service your own blue ox toe frame easy so i suppose the uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating as we say in uh, england so let's see if we can hook hook this up now it's all very movable whereas before it wouldn't move at all good job done the problem that any RV owner has who has a 50 amp cable is the fact that you've got two lives an earth and a neutral if you let this cable hit the ground these pins will bend in or out depending on how you drop it every single person i know are, are forever bending these out with a pair of pliers so if you want to solve the problem of your pins bending and if these break it's going to be an expensive job to replace um, and also there could be some danger when you go to plug in again because the pins are bent you're going to have to wiggle the plug from left to right which means there could be a situation where two pins aren't connected uh, correctly and you're going to get a spark and that could knock out your uh, out your surge protector so the way that we basically protect our 50 amp cable is as follows basically we've installed a dummy 50 amp plug it's not wired to anything there's no wires in there's no wires out and after we've unplugged our 50 amp cable we simply plug it in to the dummy plug and then we can wind in and no damage to the plug whatsoever I think that's going to set you back about 15 15 dollars I got a nice shiny one but you could get a plastic one uh, 15 dollars it will save your plug and also I just think it's tidier it's all neat and tidy so simple tip and I uh, hope you like it
about a week ago um, we were having a new radiator fitted in our uh, anthem and uh, during that time we um, we were hooked up at uh, National Indoor RV Centre, the new branch in Phoenix. And there we met a couple who told us a story which, well, it shocked us. And it, it's a bit of a horror story. And they've got an anthem. And basically, it's down to one screw, it caused them over $15,000 in damages. And I want to point out what actually happened to their coach. And then I'm gonna show you what our coach was like when we went to collect it the following day after having the radiator fitted. These people, by telling us his story, potentially saved us 15, 20, who knows, thousands of dollars. Uh, I am so glad we met them and I'm so glad they told me the story. So let me explain what they said. They were driving their RV with their car hooked on the back and this stone guard came unhooked on one side because that linkage, actually the bolt came out, the linkage came loose and at 50, 60 miles an hour, this was just swinging around. It bent double. This is a big lump of metal, basically, which is, um, it's two lumps of metal with a rubber in the middle. And this basically bent up, it smashed the back of their coach uh, it, it smashed their coach's radiator, which I know is about three and a half, four grand to have replaced, and it also smashed their tow car. Uh, I know that the damage on their RV alone was 15,000. Um, I think the co tow car is probably two or three grand. Now, that's, that's a horror story. Right? You, no one likes to hear of a story like that, and it, it just doesn't bear thinking about what could have happened. That could have come come off it could have hit the car behind it could could have killed someone but the following day we went to collect our rv from um western star of arizona who were fitting uh, a new radiator and because of this story i thought well, i better just check those um those linkages and have a look what i found So as you can see by the photos, if I hadn't checked, if that woman hadn't told me the story of what happened to them, I would have just got in that coach and driven up the I-10 or whatever it was, the I, yeah, I think it was the I-10. And that could have happened to us, which would have cost us thousands and months off the road and insurance companies arguing. So all I would say to you is before you take any journey, take two minutes just to check that those linkages are done up and you can actually see the bolt come through the outside of that, uh, of that linkage. Because I checked mine just because the story was fresh in my mind. And as you can see, mine was actually done up on one side, the side that they changed the radiator, um, by two turns. So that could have happened to us. So take heed.